So we have been looking at uh, stability of dynamical systems and yesterday I talked about a very simple method based on uh, analysis of calculations or analysis of uh, coefficients of characteristic equation and uh, we can say whether the roots of the of a polynomial whether they are inside the unit circle or outside the unit circle using a very simple uh, hand calculation. Now this method has limitations, first of all it is applicable only when you can do uh, analysis using linear models, okay, transfer function models or linear state space models. It cannot be used when you have nonlinear differential equations and real systems are nonlinear. Okay. Even though we are not going to look at nonlinear difference or differential equations as part of this course, uh, I am going to briefly introduce this idea of Lyapunov stability, which is actually applicable to uh, linear as well as nonlinear systems. Uh, nonlinear systems can be very elegantly handled through this uh, approach, and actually, it forms the foundation of modern theory of behavior of differential equations. So this was founded by a Russian mathematician and physicist uh, who lived between 1857 and 1918. Uh, his doctoral work on general problem of the stability of motion which forms the foundation of this entire theory. Stability of motion has always been you know at the center of curiosity of uh, scientific community. Uh, for example, uh, scientists have been or physicists have been bothered about the stability of orbits around the sun. It should not happen that it is a, it should be a center. You see, we talked about this phase plane portraits. You better, I mean, the solar system better behaves like center. It should not behave, it should not behave like. Uh, this system, this one, you know, if the trajectory asymptotically dies and you know, finally you merge into the center, it will be disastrous for us. Okay, so, so the stability of this stability of motions, stability of uh, orbits of uh, planetary orbits, different planetary orbits could be uh, asteroids or it could be. Uh, planets uh, or comets, it has always been a matter of curiosity. And you want to, and the, what is the problem? The problem is that you want to predict how it will behave, okay. Now, methods based on eigenvalues or uh, analysis of the roots of the characteristic polynomial can tell you whether the system is stable or unstable. But as I said, the linear systems is not a real world problem. Linear system is a toy, is an approximation that we have created in which we are very, very comfortable in doing things, okay. The real real world is nonlinear and you need, uh, so after looking at Bebo stability, some final concepts we want to now move on to. Uh, Lyapunov stability, I am just going to give you half an hour introduction to this, not really getting deep. I am going to talk about things that are relevant to linear system analysis, which we'll be using subsequently uh, in our in our uh, controller design. Nevertheless, I'll show one example which actually shows the power of this method. That uh, so, what is the Lyapunov function? Lyapunov functions are actually, you know, in some sense, very crudely speaking, they they represent generalization of energy function. Okay. Now from physics we know that a system tries to uh, take the path of minimum energy, minimum energy principle. So this is something which is a generalization of that basic idea, okay. but not for a system which is governed by laws of mechanics, okay. but general dynamical system. Okay. General dynamical system uh, would be represented either through differential equations or through difference equations. Okay, to be differential equations for convenience of computer based calculations, you can represent them as difference equations because you normally solve them using 
some kind of numerical method in computer and you advance only in finite time, uh, finite time steps, uh, you can convert it into difference equations. So for us, the stability of motion would mean uh, stability of difference set of difference equations or set of differential equations which are coupled not a single differential equation okay so in general i am uh, worried about uh, a system which is of this form xk plus 1 is equal to f of xk and f of 0 is 0 so what it means is that uh, if there is a steady state x bar we have done a transformation we have done a transformation and then we are uh, you know dealing with a differential equation which is whose uh, or difference equation whose uh, steady state is nothing but the origin. So uh, if I have if I have a difference equation let us say in the absolute variables x k plus 1 is equal to f of x k and let us say x bar is equal to f x bar if this is the steady state okay i can define a new variable which is x k that is x k minus x bar and then i can transform this equation as So this I can write as small x k plus 1 and this I can write as f x k. So this is capital X, x k plus x bar minus x bar and then this new one, this new function I can define as, redefine as f. So essentially, essentially if I, if I do this transformation if I do this transformation, I will get, I will get a function when x, when small x is equal to 0, the right hand side will be also equal to 0. So what I am expecting here is not uh, something which is not possible. When x is equal to 0, the right hand side is also identically equal to 0. So, uh, so let us say we have done this transformation. We have actually done a transformation of your original difference equation such that uh, the steady state is 0, 0. This is very simple. You just take the non-zero steady state and subtract and then you can do a translation, origin translation. So uh, for the simplicity, I am assuming that 0, 0 is the steady state. Okay. Uh, now I am going to define a function which is energy-like function. Energy function is a scalar function. Remember, energy function is a scalar function. Uh, so this is, I want this function to be a continuous function, okay. I want this function v of x, I am going to call this function as v of x. This, this new function uh, v of x is called a Lyapunov function. The first, quant first characteristic is that it should be continuous function of x. Well, simplest function of, simplest Lyapunov function would be x1 square plus x2 square, x3 square and so on. Norm of x is the simplest Lyapunov function. The scalar function, norm of 0 is 0, right? Norm of vector x 0 is 0, and uh, it is a the second thing is it should be a positive function, which means for any value of x, for any value of x, v of x should be positive, okay? v of x should be positive. A simplest way of constructing such function, which of course we are going to. Uh, exploit in this is v of x is equal to x transpose p x where p is a positive definite matrix. If p is a positive definite matrix for any x, for any x v of x will be greater than 0 if p is positive definite. right this is for for x 
x not equal to 0 will have v of x greater than 0 okay and x equal to 0 v of x will be equal to 0 okay this is simple way of constructing a Lyapunov function this is a candidate Lyapunov function this is not the only Lyapunov function there are any function which which is a positive function okay uh, and satisfies these two things and there is one more thing that it needs to satisfy to be qualified as a Lyapunov function it is not sufficient that it is a uh, it is not sufficient that it is a it is a function which is positive function we also want one more thing we want delta v that is derivative or difference of v as time progresses should be negative it should be negative definite or this should be negative okay so in some sense this should be a decreasing function as time evolves this is not a real function coming from any physics this is a function which we are fabricating okay this is the energy like function that we are fabricating okay um, so it should have three characteristics one is that it should be at origin v of x v of 0 should be 0 second characteristic is that v of x should be a positive function okay and uh, or positive definite function for any x okay we should get only a positive number and rate of change of v in time rate of change of v in time okay that should be negative okay so the energy function energy like function should be decreasing as time progresses that is the now whether it decreases or increases okay that will be governed by the system dynamics so whether a particular function qualifies to be a, a Lyapunov function for a given system will be decided by the system dynamics itself how does the system dynamics come into picture we will see that okay so basically what I am saying here is that uh, when x k let us say these are the contours of v of x equal to constant see these are different contours of v of x equal to constant okay I can plot I can plot contours of v of x equal to constant in x1 x2 plane okay so as x k goes from x k to x k plus 1 through dynamic equation okay on these contours I should move from outer contour to the inner contour that is what I mean okay it should continuously decrease that is what I expect to happen okay so these are the contours if you plot a 3D plot it will look something like this two dimensional system and a Lyapunov function for it so v of x is plotted on z axis and this is x1 x2 axis so a Lyapunov function for a two dimensional system this is a simplified uh, visualization of a Lyapunov function it should look like a valley okay with a sharp minimum okay with a sharp minimum that is what it should look like and if you if you cut if you cut here different slices for v of, v of x equal to constant see if you take any height here on this scale you know you will get v of x equal to constant and if you project that if you project that onto uh, uh, x1 x2 plane then it should look like concentric circles and what I want to happen is that as system evolves okay on the on this surface of this function I should move inside and inside that is what I want to happen okay the system evolves according to its laws of dynamics and uh, the third condition actually tells you that uh, Lyapunov function never increases uh, with time it should be less than or equal to 0 so it should it should either stagnate it should never grow as time progresses that is what I want if I can find a function for a given system which which obeys these three conditions then now whether this will happen or not will depend upon the system matrix you can just go back and see here see my system evolves according to x k plus 1 is equal to f of f of x k 
my system evolves according to this okay. Now let me define this V of x, so V of x, V of x k let us say I have defined as, I have defined as uh, x k transpose p x k where p is a positive definite matrix. <coughs> what I want to happen is that V of x k plus 1 which is x k plus 1 transpose p x k plus 1 which is same as f x k transpose p f x k right okay. So this I compute v x k plus 1 like this and then I want delta v to be negative definite. So you see where the dynamic centers here, the dynamic centers here through this f of x k transpose okay. So that is where the dynamic centers into the system. So this, this Lyapunov function does not naturally come out of the system dynamics, we are defining an artificial function okay and if you can find an artificial function which obeys this uh, characteristic then we can talk about the stability. There are so many numerical methods. For example, you could use uh, simplest is Euler method. The you can have more complicated algorithms like Runge-Kutta methods. So you can convert into a equivalent difference equation from differential equation. There are predictor corrector methods. One could represent that into a. All of them will be approximate. They will not be exact. But then. Uh, so be it we can we have when we deal with nonlinear differential equations in computers we have to deal with this approximate discretization and then <coughs> okay so now so this i want to stress that it is an artificially constructed scalar function okay if i am able to construct this scalar function which has certain properties then i am able to talk about the stability of the dynamical system if i am not able to construct that doesn't mean anything if I am able to construct then I can prove some characteristics of the dynamical system. If I am not able to construct then that does not mean the system is unstable or anything of that sort okay. So do not uh, stretch it uh, the other way around. Now let us look at this particular system okay. This is a very very simple system. Uh, what will be the equilibrium point is 0, 0 okay. Uh, the linearization of this system, if you do linearization of this system at 0, 0, okay, you will find that the system has two poles on the unit circle. For this particular system, if you do linearization, you find that there are two poles on the unit circle, okay, and based on our linear system theory, you would say that well, this is you know a center this is marginally stable okay actually using linear so what i said is that for a system when you do linearization if you get eigen values on the unit circle you cannot do analysis using uh, linear approximation that is that is ruled out you can linearization based analysis holds for the nonlinear system only for two cases asymptotically stable or unstable marginal stability cannot be established using linearization so this is a classic example you cannot do that here okay let's define this simple lyapunov function simplest that you can think of x1 square plus x2 square okay the simplest lyapunov function one can think of uh, now v is a continuous function just just check that is it a continuous function it's a continuous function now can you find out just do the calculations what will be v of xk plus 1 and tell me whether the third condition is satisfied. Two conditions are satisfied. What is the first condition? X0 is equal to 0. What is the second condition? Let us go back. X should be a continuous function of X. A Vx should be a continuous function of X, which is happening, right? What is the second criteria? 
it is a positive function x1 square plus x2 square for any x1 x2 is a positive function no problem what about the third one just try what do you think upon not positive value a value which is greater than 1 so if you if you substitute uh, x1 if you find out the value for uh, v of x k plus 1 okay you will see that uh, you will get this x2 square upon 1 plus x2 square whole square okay and this this quantity this quantity is uh, nothing but v x upon 1 plus x2 square whole square the denominator is always greater than 1 the denominator is always greater than 1 so which means v of x k plus 1 is always less than v of x k okay v of x k plus 1 sorry is always less than I made a mistake let me correct v of x k plus 1 is always less than v of x k okay so as time progresses this Lyapunov function value reduces okay as time progresses the Lyapunov function value will reduce and uh, so this is the Lyapunov function for the system now what is the significance of having a Lyapunov function well is the Lyapunov function unique just try just try what happens if you take alpha where alpha and beta alpha x1 square plus beta x2 square will it be a Lyapunov function if you take any alpha and any beta which are positive okay even they will turn out to be a Lyapunov function you will get the same expression okay so this will also be a Lyapunov function so there is no unique Lyapunov function for this particular system fortunately you are able to find out infinite number of Lyapunov functions okay this may not happen for most of the real systems it is difficult to find a Lyapunov function but that is a different story now well, this is a very very fundamental theorem of Lyapunov uh, well I will uh, let us not get into the, the the theorem statement you can read uh, what I want to say here or what 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 uh, the, the message here is that in the neighborhood of the steady state okay in this particular case 0 0 right in this particular case 0 0 in the neighborhood of the steady state if you can find a region okay in which you can define a Lyapunov function okay if you can find a region in the neighborhood of the steady state okay on which you can define a Lyapunov function what is a Lyapunov function it should be positive okay it should be decreasing as time progresses okay a positive function which is decreasing as time progresses then okay it says that the equilibrium point is stable then it guarantees that it guarantees that the system trajectory will stay in the neighborhood of the stay in the neighborhood of the uh, steady state that is being investigated <coughs> now there are two things there are two possibilities okay one possibility is see one possibility is that delta v x k is less than or equal to 0 and other possibility is delta v x k is less than 0 strictly less than 0 okay and these two are different possibilities in one case in one case we can we allow possibility that delta v is 0 okay so uh, there is no change there is no change in the value of so it means if I go here see suppose it happens that my you know suppose it happens that x k moves to x k plus 1 oh yeah. suppose it happens that x k moves to x k plus 1 and you you reach this trajectory here 
once you reach the trajectory the next point is trajectory in the sense this is the this is the constant v value this is the contour for v equal to constant the next move occurs such that it is again on the same contour okay a third move occurs such that it is on the same contour what will happen is that delta v this is a this is a contour for v is equal to constant okay suppose the system gets trapped in a in a region where uh, the value of the v is not decreasing okay if value of the v is not decreasing then all that you can say is that this that your dynamics will keep hovering in the neighborhood of the steady state the second situation is that this difference is strictly less than 0 every time so what will happen every time every time it will move inside and inside okay and finally as time goes to infinity xk will collapse into the origin so these are two different situations in one case all that you are saying is that delta v is non decreasing okay it's it's remain it's remaining it's becoming zero so you allow either decreasing or non decreasing you know zero zero or, or less than zero in other case you are staying strictly less than zero these two are different two situations okay and these situations are captured through okay so <coughs> So if if delta v is strictly negative for every uh, you know for every k, then we know that the system will eventually go to origin. Okay, if the for the given delta v, we just find that it becomes zero at some point, okay, and remains zero for example, then you cannot say about asymptotic stability the, the the first thing that i talked about is asymptotic stability because you know every time every time system moves from a counter outside to a counter inside to a counter inside and finally it should collapse if every time it is negative it has to move inside all the time so uh, you know it will it will collapse into uh, if sometimes it may happen that it is neither increasing nor decreasing the system uh, stays in a in some trajectory in some bounded region in the example that we considered okay uh, since there exists a lyapunov function so so this this theorem powerful theorem says that if you can find a lyapunov function for a given dynamical system okay which obeys these two uh, these three criteria then okay you can guarantee stability in fact if it is if the difference is negative then you can guarantee asymptotic stability okay and this idea holds for any dynamical system you can see the sweeping generalization this result brings in it is a different question whether you can construct a Lyapunov function for a complex system but if you can construct it guarantees that you know uh, it guarantees to analyze the stability of the dynamical system in the neighborhood of a given point okay it tells you whether it is linear or non-linear does not matter okay so very 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 general result and now just going back to the system that we are we looked at just now okay if you do linearization you get two eigen values which are on the unit circle and you have problem and uh, you cannot analyze stability using linearization but you can talk about that particular system happens to be uh, asymptotically stable and this you can never establish using a linearization based uh, it is asymptotically stable in the neighborhood of zero origin that you can never establish using uh, Lyapunov stability analysis because you get this difficulty of poles on the so so linear world is a ideal world and everything that all the results that you create there do not one to one transfer to the non linear world you have to use something else well we are not uh, going to get into this Lyapunov stability too much except we need uh, some simple results for linear system theory which we will be using uh, and you probably have to attend a separate course if you want to understand this uh, thing in detail. I am just going to derive some useful results for linear systems because we are going to use them later when we talk about uh, design or analyzing some stability of certain systems. Now let us look at this simple system. Uh, well, Lyapunov stability as I have defined right now, it talks about 
unforced stability. Okay, you can of course talk about uh, or you can analyze stability in presence of some inputs. Okay, and those concepts are much more advanced, and I'm not going to touch upon them in this course. So there is something called input to state stability and uh, input to state practical stability. There are many many more uh, notions. If you are interested, the book by Khalil on nonlinear systems is a very good book. I listed the book uh, at the end of my lecture notes. So uh, also, I think there are courses in the institute. Uh, Syscon systems and control and electrical engineering offers courses on nonlinear systems analysis. Even we offer a course uh, when whenever it is possible, elective on. So uh, now. For the linear system, the task of constructing Lyapunov functions is very simple. Okay, for linear systems, I need to construct a Lyapunov function. I can do it using any positive definite matrix. Uh, so, if you if you actually substitute uh, v of x k plus one, this is a very simple calculation that you will get here. Uh, v of this you will get this x k transpose. Uh, phi transpose p phi into x k. This is just by substituting the dynamic equation. This is very very straightforward. And if I take a difference, I will get this delta v, that is v x k plus one minus v x k, will give me this matrix. All that I need is this matrix. This matrix should be negative definite. If this is negative definite. What is the problem? Ah, oh, minus p should be there. Yeah, not i. So there we are. So this matrix that is phi transpose p phi minus p, this matrix should be negative definite. If this matrix is negative definite, then uh, we have constructed a Lyapunov function for this particular system. Okay. Now the question is, when does such a matrix exist? Okay, you can show that uh, such a matrix, such a matrix exists. Um, then, of course, uh, uh, the system is uh, asymptotically stable. So, actually, you can show that if eigenvalues of phi are inside the unit circle, okay, eigenvalues of phi are inside the unit circle, then you can always construct a matrix P such that phi transpose P phi minus P. This is negative definite. That is always possible. Now you might wonder why, when you can analyze stability of a linear system using eigenvalues, and eigenvalues can be computed very uh, elegantly, very easily now. Why do I need this particular method? You will see as we progress. We still need this classic equation. Um, this particular equation is called as Lyapunov equation, uh, and it can be shown that. Uh, uh, this equation will always have a solution provided eigenvalues of phi are inside the unit circle. If phi is asymptotic, if phi has eigenvalues which are inside the unit circle, which means if the system is asymptotically stable, you can always construct a Lyapunov function such that phi transpose p phi minus p is negative definite. Okay. Uh, so this is this is guaranteed, and this is used. This will be used in analysis at some point later. Okay, so there are times when you analyze some uh, controller uh, behavior, closed loop behavior. It becomes difficult to analyze using eigenvalues. Okay, it's easier to analyze using Lyapunov theory. So that's why I'm that's why I'm developing this right now. For linear systems, it will have some other implications when it comes to design. Okay. Uh, so. In MATLAB, you have a function called Lyap. Okay, so if you give phi, if you give phi matrix, and if you specify Q matrix, if phi has eigenvalues inside unit circle, and if you specify Q matrix, okay, it will give you back P matrix. Okay, it will give you back P matrix. So, I'm just taking a simple example. This is a, a simple harmonic oscillator system. Uh, this has 
uh, eigenvalues which are 3 by 4 and plus or minus 1 by 4 j. So, the system is asymptotically stable. So, if I specify q, I can solve this equation. I can specify q. See, what is this equation? This equation says that uh, phi is system matrix, q let us say I specify, I want to design, I want to design a Lyapunov function, I want to find a Lyapunov function for this particular system. So, given what I will do is I will choose a matrix q which is positive definite, so that minus q is negative definite okay and then I can back calculate p okay and this Lyapunov equation appears in many other contexts. So, it is uh, so, if I give this p, if I give q1 to be, see I have chosen q to be uh, 1.25.251, this is a positive definite matrix. So, negative of this is a negative definite matrix, okay. And then for this particular uh, choice of q, I will get a Lyapunov function which is, uh, which is p1 matrix is given here. If I choose q to be 1, 1, then I will get this Lyapunov function which is 8 by 3, 8 by 3. So, there is no unique way of constructing Lyapunov function, both this P1 and P2, both these matrices will give you a Lyapunov function for this particular linear system, okay. So, both of them are valid Lyapunov functions that is uh, x1 transpose P1 x1, P1 xk and x, xk transpose P2 xk, both of them are can be used as uh, Lyapunov functions. Now, uh, well, I am stopping it here, I am not getting into uh, more details of Lyapunov function. I have introduced this Lyapunov stability because it will be useful later when we analyze uh, state feedback controllers, that is where it is going to be useful, okay. It is a very, 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 very brief introduction, there cannot be shorter, something shorter than this for Lyapunov stability theory. It is a, as I said, if you are interested, you should actually read this book very well written book uh, for those who have flavor for maths, it is a very nice book, Khalil uh, Nonlinear Systems and Nonlinear Systems and uh, this book is of course available in our library. So, um, even the, sec the second book is a very nice book, Khalil's book is a advanced text, it is it's useful if you are uh, going to do research in uh, control theory. Uh, this is probably the primer this book is uh, will give you a brief introduction the kind of thing which I have given you in one and a half like hours, uh, but it will give you a practical uh, knowledge about what it is. Leon Berger's book is intermediate, it is not uh, at the level of Khalil, but it is also introductory book very nicely uh, deals with uh, uh, dynamic systems and a third book of course, Khalil's book is a specialized book where uh, so, why, why I have done this? That is because I need this a little later. So, I am going to use two tools for analyzing stability. One is roots of the characteristic polynomial, other is Lyapunov function, okay. So, this is just, just a brief background to the stability analysis uh, and we are going to move on. Now, we are going to move on to something different now. So, now let us move on to the controller design. What I want to do eventually is controller design using state feedback or using the state space models that we have developed, okay. But before I move to those controller design problems or code controller design methods, I need to give some motivation as to why do I need to do all that, why is there any benefit? Because in your first course in control, you study about PID controllers and if you go to industry, if you have done any uh, industrial uh, training or if you have spent some time in industry before coming for your post graduation, you would realize that PID controllers are everywhere and you go to any company, uh, any power plant, any chemical plant, it is just full of hundreds and hundreds of PID controllers, okay. And here I am talking about state feedback controller, why? What is so great? Is there a motivation to go for something more complex than simple PID controllers? Also PID controllers which we are taught to you in your first course, are they do they remain simple when you have hundreds of them together, okay, is the question, okay. Hmm. Yeah, it is possible to define for continuous time systems.
continuity is a different notion from uh, continuous time and continuity what is continuity of a function that is a different different notion altogether you know you do not confuse between continuous time system and a continuous function these two are the word continuous is common does not mean that they are referring to the same things what is a continuous function for every epsilon greater than 0 what what something what <laughs> we should be able to find out delta greater than 0 huh? what is it tell me who remembers left limit and right limit that is a simple way of looking at it yeah. So, for every uh, epsilon greater than 0, so if you advance f of x mod of f of x minus uh, f of x plus epsilon or x minus epsilon whatever you want to call it difference of this okay. Uh, so, you should be able to find x minus x tilde which is uh, less than delta such that yeah for any value of x in this in this uh, interval uh, you know f of x will be less than epsilon f of x minus f of x tilde mod of f of x minus f of x tilde is less than epsilon. So, that is the definition you can of course go for multivariable functions and talk with norms okay. Continuity of a continuity of a nonlinear function is different from continuous time systems and discrete time systems no uh, do not confuse the two uh, two things. I can get into those things, but uh, we have limited time. So, and then uh, I I think you were attending those lectures, right, on nonlinear systems where I dealt about continuity, different notions of continuity. Yeah, we talked about uh, Lipschitz continuity and you know uniform continuity, and so there are. Okay, so I just want to move on for a very short period to uh, another topic. So now finally we start doing the main business, business of control. Okay, now that we have models, we have tools of analysis. We have two tools of analysis. One is uh, eigenvalues, uh, and then we have uh, Lyapunov functions. Okay, and now let's get into the business of doing control. Okay. The nice thing now is that we are in a imaginary world where we have a model and we believe that the process dynamics is represented by this model. Now, this model is something which we can play with, we can turn it around, we can you know uh, introduce some new terms, we can do all kinds of things. Later we have to worry about how to translate that into reality. If you design a controller in the space of models which are linear models, okay, we will have to then take it back to the reality through some computer implementation or something but now once we once we have developed the model we have we have uh, you know uh, a description of the dynamics and now the idea is can i alter the dynamics the way i want okay that is the main idea we believe that this model is a good representation of the real system so if i do manipulations with this model the similar manipulations will hold for the real system under that belief we carry out a design okay okay so let me see what we have here uh, i'll talk about uh, something called multi loop control i want to go bit before you go to advanced control i want to talk a little bit about these pid controllers which we have looked at in your first course uh, and what happens when you have multiple pid controllers what is what is the problem uh, then is there a way of intelligently choosing PID controllers that is what we will look at through something called relative gain array analysis. There is a singular analysis which will also help us in uh, finding out how to go about doing uh, you know choosing uh, PID controller pairing. What is this pairing? We will come to that. We'll, uh, then there is a concept called decoupling controllers. I will briefly introduce these decoupling controllers uh, and then conclude. Well, this this part I am going to do very quickly because yes, it is important. It's an important link between what you have studied in, in your undergraduate as a control course and what we are going to study next. Uh, nevertheless, 
uh, I, I don't want to emphasize it too much. I will uh, go through it uh, somewhat quickly. Uh, there is lot to it. Uh, if you uh, a lot of work has been done on this area, but uh, what I'm going to do for next maybe uh, one or two lectures is not uh, completely representative. It just gives you a flavor. Okay. So real systems, real industrial systems are multivariable. Multivariable systems. Uh, there are multiple inputs, and there are multiple outputs to be controlled. You have multiple things at your manipulation. The example that I keep using in many many uh, lectures uh, on advanced control is your car. Your car has, uh, you know, you want to uh, control speed, direction, and you have three uh, inputs at your disposal. You can accelerate, you can brake, and you can you have a steering. Okay. But in real industrial systems, there are hundreds, hundreds of measurements, and hundreds of manipulated inputs that are available to you. Look at a power plant; we'll have many, many, many manipulated variables available to you. Many temperatures, pressures, flows, all data coming in, and you want to simultaneously control everything. You want to control the state of the system. Okay, and the conventional approach to doing this is using multiple PID controllers. Okay. This is something which is being done last for 40, 50 years, 60 years. Very complex thing when you do it using multiple PID controllers. Using multiple PID controllers to control a complex multivariable plant is like having three different drivers or two different drivers in your car. One who only manages accelerator, one who only manages the brake, the third who only manages uh, steering. Okay, not not a funny thing to have in your car. When you are driving, if you are three people who don't talk to each other, who don't know about existence of each other, you can have chaos, and that's why controlling industrial plants is quite difficult when you have multiple PID controllers. Typically, the way these PID controllers are implemented today, they are implemented in such a way that they don't talk to each other, they don't know about existence of each other, okay, and so it's like hundred drivers simultaneously driving a a, a plant, okay. And that's why you need, a, a, you know, a team of uh, uh, plant engineers and operators who are continuously on the watch. What is happening? Twenty-four hour there has to be a watch. Uh, so you, you will start wondering how it still it works. Uh, so this is what what I'm going to call as a multi-loop control strategy. Multi-loop is multiple drivers. Okay. And multi-variable controller is you driving your car, single person making decisions about all three things simultaneously by taking into consideration both speed and direction. This is the ideal situation: one driver for your car, not, or at least if if there are, you know, if there are thousand uh, variables to be controlled and manipulated, you don't want thousand drivers. You can probably reduce it to twenty drivers. It's better than having. Uh, Thousand drivers. Okay, so that is uh, so multivariable controllers is what we want to eventually go to. Uh, so what is the problem with loop interactions? So typically there is a lack of interaction, there is lack of coordination between the loops. Now the neighboring loops, okay, can collaborate and help each other, or they can destroy each other. They can fight. Okay, if they fight. You know you have a trouble. How do you find out whether the loops are fighting or not fighting? How do you pair which controlled output should be controlled using which manipulated variable? If I am controlling speed, should I use accelerator to control or brake to control? What is what is my strategy? If I have multiple ways of controlling a system, what is the pairing? Because PID controller means I have a single input and single output. Right, I have a single measurement, single manipulation. Okay, so even if let's 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 go to this plant. This is a distillation column plant. Don't worry about if you don't understand distillation. There are things that are to be controlled that you can definitely appreciate. Top end point. This is a distillation column in which you separate chemicals, mixture of chemicals, using uh, you know uh, difference between their relative volatilities. So. 
this is the industrial column of shell you want to uh, get uh, top end point means top product quality okay uh, side end point means side product quality and uh, temperature here at the bottom these three things uh, have to be controlled or have to be are the controlled outputs from the viewpoint of uh, uh, operating the system i have three manipulated variables i have top draw amount of liquid that i draw from here this is called top draw okay then there is a side draw i can draw some liquid from the side and uh, i can input heat here this is called uh, bottom reflux duty so there is a boiler here you you put in some heat here uh, say through steam so i can heat this system look at this as a input output system okay there are three inputs there are three outputs there are multiple states okay what is happening inside is very very complex but as a control engineer i have developed a model using uh, you know matlab's toolbox or whatever toolbox that you have scilab toolbox you have a model which is uh, probably data driven model and you know how the dynamics of the system is uh, you know how the dynamics behaves in neighborhood of some operating point so you have a model fine now question is if i want to put pid controllers how do i put them should y1 be controlled or y1 be tied up with a pid controller that manipulates u1 or u2 or u3 you know there is a combinatorial problem here okay what should be my controlled output what should be my manipulated variable okay i am allowed to put three pid controllers okay and which one to go which one goes with which one and what is the basis for choosing that okay well the life is not so simple there are also other inputs which you cannot manipulate there are true to heat there is a heat exchange between some other stream in the chemical plant uh and and some liquid inside here on some trays so there are two disturbances which keep influencing the plant this is one of the standard problems which uh the shell group has floated in the control literature okay so there are two disturbances there are three inputs and there are three outputs uh i am defining a simplified problem they have given a problem which is more complex they have given a problem with seven outputs five inputs and uh and three disturbances i have created a simplified problem here uh, so now the question is which one which one should i pair with which one you know how do i uh, couple these inputs and outputs into one pid controller at a time so difficult problem so which scheme is better i can come up with many schemes right i can say that top end point the you know i can say that physical proximity is important so if the manipulated variable is here and i want to control this concentration i should tie them up together okay but somebody might say no 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 this heating here has a very high influence on the concentration here so this concentration should be tied up with this heating well that is also logical okay so there are possibilities which are similar okay and then one needs a filter to screen out these possibilities okay i need some filter to screen out these possibilities so fundamental question is which is the better scheme which which is is this scheme better that is y1 u1 y2 u2 y3 u3 now this numbering u1 u2 u3 is arbitrary okay so uh, i i have written some scheme here 1 1 2 2 3 3 okay i can come up with some other scheme y2 u1 y1 u2 and so on okay so typically way people or practicing engineers have been dealing with this is through so called experience okay uh people have operated plants for years and they know that if you actually do uh, the second combination it may not be a great idea and this knowledge is transferred from generation to generation and then uh you know you keep do is doing those things uh so is there a way of systematically reaching a decision how do i do pairing in a complex plant i'll just show you one simple uh example of a complex plant so this is a tennessee eastman problem which is floated by tennessee eastman company uh now well 
uh, we can appreciate this plant as a control engineer uh, without knowing what is physics. This is a reactor here and in this reactor there is some reaction being carried out. The reaction gives rise to products which are gaseous. So these products are coming out here, they go to a condenser. So you condense those products. products. What happens unfortunately is that what comes out is not just the products, reactants and products together come out. Okay. So you have here a mixture of reactants and products. So you need to separate them because you want the product. Okay. So uh, this is done in this vapor liquid separator. Okay, and part of what is recovered is is fed back through a compressor to this particular reactor. So I don't want to throw out, you know, good stuff which is the reactants are gaseous and liquid, and then uh, the product which comes out is gaseous. What is the product? Tennessee Eastman has not said anything. They have published a paper as a challenge problem in for control engineers, and they just say A B C D E F G H. Okay. So there are six uh, components A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H and they have given some uh, reactions which uh, you, you do not understand and you write to them or you go to their web page, you can download a program which will simulate this plant. Okay. So you can actually give inputs, there are 12 inputs to this plant, you can give 12 inputs, there are different inputs here. You, you can see the measurements given here, these are symbols of measurements, these are the concentration measurements available at the purge and these are the concentration measurements available at the product. Now what happens is the bottom of this particular vapor liquid separator comes to this uh, unit called stripper and in this stripper at the bottom you get the product and again uh, for stripping you use this one of the reactants, the C is a reactant which is used to strip um, some components which are remaining still in my uh, bottom liquid and those are again recycled here okay and the product is withdrawn here. Now you can see here that this is a coupled system okay what uh, modern systems modern plants are always very very tightly coupled integrated plants you do not want to waste even a you know uh, a kg of a uh, material. So whatever is might you know in olden days you may not have such coupled things, you just create a product and then uh, store it somewhere then uh, you know separate it and then afterwards might think of reusing it and so on. Whereas now uh, you know you do not have time, you want to do it online, uh, separate uh, unreacted material, put it back into the reactor, take the products and then send them for packaging or whatever. So <coughs> any small perturbation in this reactor will have effect on this heat exchanger will have effect on this vapor liquid equilibrium will have effect on this uh, stripper. So these are coupled interacting systems okay. It is stupid to put you know 12 drivers, 12 PID controllers I am allowed to put for this system. It is uh, you can see this, moment you see this, you know that if you put 12 drivers driving this plant who do not know about each other it can be chaos okay. So how do you choose this 12 PID controllers, how do you select pairing? Okay, should I should I measure pressure here and manipulate you know this cold water flow? Should I measure pressure here and manipulate the flow out? What should I do? Everything affects everything. Okay, <laughs> so uh, it's very hard to make that decision. Okay, and we want a systematic method for reaching that decision. Yeah, that is a very good guess, very good thinking. So I want to systematize this, which variable will have maximum effect. So what what is the primary uh, uh, when you develop models, say transfer function model, what will you look at? Gain, gain will give you sensitivity, yeah? Steady state gain, steady state gain. I can look at a steady state gain. Is there a trouble with using looking at steady state gains? Uh, it does depend upon tau to yes. Sensitivity does depend upon tau, but let us not 
let us right now look at a steady state model simple. Suppose I have a simple gain model like he is saying sensitivity in some sense can it be used? See if you look here the variables of are of all kinds some of them are mole fractions some of them are pressures some of them are temperatures okay some of them are flows okay. So, what all things I can manipulate? I can manipulate this inlet flow, I can manipulate this flow, I can manipulate this flow, I can manipulate this flow. This four flows I can manipulate. This compressor feedback line, this feedback line, I can manipulate this, this particular valve on the compressor feedback line. This is called purge. Purge means you let out some bleed stream because you want to maintain balance of some things that are not reacted. In a reaction it always happens that there are some things which come in which are not useful. For example, you want oxygen but you have to you are pumping in air and nitrogen comes in and you have to keep pumping out nit nitrogen and that is done through this uh, I mean I am giving a very crude example but you manage it through this purge. You keep purging the nitrogen out through or some gases out which are not useful. So this purge is uh, you can change the purge flow rate, you can change the flow rate fro from this uh, you know vapor liquid separator to this stripper, this flow rate can be changed, this cooling water flow rate can be changed, this cooling water flow rate can be changed, this product draw rate can be changed. So there are so many manipulated variables okay. What do I want to control okay, I want to control pressure level temperature here. I want to control pressure level temperature here. See L, L, I, P, I are pressure indicator, level indicator, temperature indicator. Any reaction I want to control reaction, pressure, reaction, temperature and amount of reactants inside the reactor level okay. Uh, I of course want to control the product purity that is why I am worried about putting the analyzer here okay. I am worried about the product purity if I am producing uh, you know let us say alcohol let it, it better be of particular quality okay otherwise it is useless for me. So the quality is very very important. So, uh, so putting up how do you systematically come up with a pairing of which controlled output and which manipulated variable if I want to put 12 PID controllers for this system is not a trivial exercise it requires a lot of uh, Okay. So, if there are large loop interactions, you know, if the loops start fighting, then you can have poor quality of control. So, is there a configuration, is there a configuration of 12 PID controllers or whatever N PID controllers such that they fight least okay is what I want to find out. I want to find this out mathematically. Okay, I am just going to use simple information of gains. Now gains on, on their own are not useful that is because gain value depends upon the unit used for calculating the gain okay and units of each variables. See pressure might be Newton per meter square it might be 10 to the power 5 okay temperature is in 100, 100 okay. So, if I find out change in pressure by change in flow that value might look very large because pressure is expressed but the same thing if I express in terms of atmospheres instead of Newton per meter square it might look very small. So, you know comparing gains of different variables becomes very difficult you cannot compare gains so easily. So, you need a method which is gain independent sensitivity you should look at sensitivities no doubt but directly looking at sensitivities does not help because those values can be deceptive they can be unit dependent okay. So, you find a value which is per hour or per second will give you different values and you know uh, difficult to make a call on whether this gain is high or this gain is low it is very difficult to say okay. Uh, so, what is done a practical way of dealing with this problem is to try to find a configuration of PID controllers such that they are you know in some sense fighting least okay uh, and 
if you can come up with a least fighting configuration then you choose that configuration and hope for the best that is you try to tune them in such a way that uh, okay let us take this good old example of quadruple tank okay uh, i have two inputs and two outputs question is which input i want to put two pi controllers or two pid controllers whether level 1 and input 1 or level 1 and input 2 okay that is the question yeah ah, but that is multi variable controller no? so I am I will talk about multi variable controllers separate so can I have a PID controller which uh, controls multiple outputs simultaneously that is a different class that is not right now used in the industry it is not readily available off the shelf you can buy a single loop PID controller you can go to market and say I want a PID controller you will get one input one output at the most you can do cascade with it or some feed forward control but that is it okay though modern DCS allows you to implement uh, multi variable PID controllers people do not know about it they still use you know a hammer to kill uh, ant so uh, they have a very very powerful tool in a DCS you can actually implement multi variable PID controllers people just do not know about it so they just keep implementing multiple PID loops okay why because we are comfortable doing that over years okay how will you normalize all variables yeah but then then your values also the way you normalize also will play a role no? is not it how do I compare gain with respect to pressure and gain with respect to temperature I mean if I take temperature variable and pressure normalize with respect to what maximum but maximum of pressure means what which maximum a maximum which can occur under disaster or maximum which occurs under normal operation which maximum right see normal operation it could be that you know it plus or minus 5 degrees a disaster maximum could be plus or minus 50 degrees which one do you use so your decision there will influence the gain value calculations what you say is, is a is a good thing we actually do that we do dimensionless kind of gains but even then they do not help they help only to a limited uh, point okay now uh, where is the problem where is the trouble okay look at two PID controllers this is my process whatever is drawn here this is my process this is representation mathematical representation of the process okay we have seen we have seen that if I if I change input 1 tank 1 changes and tank 4 cha level changes also that means tank 2 level changes okay same is true here if I change input 2 tank 2 level changes and through this leg even tank 1 level changes. So if I actually find a transfer function matrix we have done this earlier we found a transfer function matrix it was a full matrix okay and I have just represented this here graphically g11 is a transfer function between u1 y1 g12 g21 is between u1 and y2 21 is a transfer function between u2 and y1 and this is a transfer function between y2 and u2 okay and there are two pid controllers okay i'll just try to show you what is happening what are the paths see this this particular this particular look at this output of this particular controller m1 influences y1 through this path right direct path there is a direct path between m1 and y1 through this g11 and there is an indirect path which is this right so trace this path so when there is a another pid controller okay whatever this controller is doing is affecting y1 through two channels through two routes one is the direct route okay and other is this other is this route through the other loop and just imagine what would happen if there are multiple such controllers okay there will be interactions between 
different loops and a given loop okay and then i need to actually is everyone clear about this what is happening here this is a simple very very simple explanation of when and typically typically this two controllers are independent they don't know about existence of each other okay even though they are implemented through same hardware they might be two controllers running parallelly in this computer but they don't talk to each other they don't exchange information okay if they don't exchange information you ask why why don't they exchange information that is because we started using pid controllers historically using analog hardware okay initially the pid controllers were implemented using uh, you know pneumatic hardware yeah bellows and you know uh, things like that uh, springs and bellows and then we moved uh, to uh, electrical circuits uh, op amp circuits okay where gain was you know op amp and uh, uh, integral and derivative uh, was realized through capacitance and resistance and inductance okay so so historically we have that baggage of using uh, electronic uh, controllers then you know what happened after that from you know pneumatic controllers to electronic controllers to uh, we moved to microprocessor based controllers now microprocessor based controllers you don't you don't what you do is you are solving a differential equation or a difference equation you don't have to stick to you know those old forms why those old forms were thought of p i and d because those three fundamental forms can be realized through a physical hardware very easily okay our lc circuits you can actually fabricate and realize a differential equation you can come up with a equivalent of a differential equation you can have a value uh, of op amp gain which is same as your desired gain you can have a value of l and r and c such that you know you get designed integral time and derivative time and so on so those were done okay because of certain constraints that existed in those times and in 80s when we are in 90s when we moved to digital control okay uh, so these were on board computers which were used for doing control and they could do much more than you know just implementing a pid controller pid controller is one differential equation solving it online you know is child's play for using a microprocessor even the pri preliminary ones which existed in 80s okay so that is uh, you know uh, highly underuse of what is existing but that is because of the historical baggage we still continue to use multiple pid controllers in the plants because we have been using them for last 50 years and we have a lot of experience okay and how to design controllers multi variable controllers is something which is not so well known yet yeah but but it this bis pid controller will work only according to output y1 no see this pid controller will only look at y1 and this pid controller will look at y2 it is not cross links see this pid controller doesn't know when you when you do this it doesn't know that m2 will actually will have a effect on y1 which will through this loop will have effect on y2 ha ah, it is just trying to control y1 it doesn't realize that you know if i make up change here ha ah. so ideally what you should do see if i ask you if i if i ask you to control this plant if i give you two knobs you know this and this okay actually we can uh, we can now actually uh, start this we have this setup in the lab we can go and do experiments so if you what will you do you will not if you if you are put in the job of doing it you will look at both the walls you will look at both the levels and look at both the walls and try to control both you will never try to you know say that okay i will only look at this okay now just imagine a situation that you are only looking at one wall and he is looking at one wall and then you don't talk to each other okay you only look at you know your level which is strange okay you are reacting you know uh, to only level 1 and he is reacting only to level 2 and you are taking independent control actions okay so there is a problem yeah no 
No, so attempt to track level 2 will create a disturbance in level 1 control, okay. Same way attempt of uh, attempt to travel uh, tra track level 1 very very precisely can create a problem in level 2, okay. So what we need to do is that if they start fighting we call it detuning, we need to sort of not tune each controller aggressively, okay. See, you may have designed a single loop controller using some beautiful method for single loop design. It will be very tight control, but you know two tight controllers if they start fighting is a trouble, okay. So we need to sort of back off from two tight designs to do a you know uh, there has to be some compromise which has to be st struck between them. First of all you should choose them properly, pairing should be chosen properly, okay. So that is the first first question. So we will actually do this using what is called as interaction analysis. So we will continue looking at interaction analysis in the next lecture. So I will talk about this interaction analysis. How do you analyze you know how do you analyze these loops behavior okay uh, particularly in presence of other loops and in absence of other loops. Can you compare and make some judgment what will happen. <coughs>